thank you for being generous, Doctor, with your time. Our students benefit, as you know, immeasurably when world leaders like you come to our campus and share their perspectives to engage in thoughtful dialogue. Last year, we inaugurated WPI at LMU, our interdisciplinary think tank in partnership with the World Policy Institute of New York. Your insights into world affairs and government will add to our scholarship. Also, as you know, we are home to Asia Media International. That's LMU's student-driven publication, which is a vital part of LMU's Department of Asian and Asian American Studies. Through their stories on our Asia Media website, our young journalists, led by Professor Tom Plate, our distinguished scholar of Asian and Pacific Studies, and of course, the author of a book, about you, keep a watchful eye on a region that is of vital importance to today's globe. Dr. Taksim's career began in law enforcement. He graduated from the Thai Police Cadet Academy, then earned a master's degree in criminal justice from Eastern Kentucky University, and a doctorate in criminal justice from, from Sam Houston State University. That happened in 1978. He returned to Thailand, where he rose to the ranks of the police department, eventually becoming lieutenant colonel. Dr. Taksin had another passion. This was for business. After he left the police service, his entrepreneurial spirit inspired him to compete in a variety of businesses, and he came into his own when he founded Advanced Info Service, that's AIS, which started as a computer rental business. And AI has transformed its offerings over the years, experiencing phenomenal growth when it became the largest mobile phone operator in Thailand. And at the pinnacle of his success, Dr. Taksin returned to public service in 1994 when he served as foreign minister and then as deputy prime minister. Dr. Taksin received worldwide attention in his political career when he became prime minister of Thailand. He was first elected in 2001 and was the first democratically elected Prime Minister of Thailand to serve a full term. Dr. Taksin enjoyed strong public support and his popularity increased with his swift response to the devastating Indian Ocean tsunami of December 2004. He was re-elected by an overwhelming majority in 2005 and during his time in office he devoted his energies and political ambitions to making the Thai economy more equitable, to relieving poverty in its rural areas, and to strengthening the country's democracy. In 2006, Dr. Taksin was deposed as prime minister in a military coup, and he's lived in exile in Dubai ever since. In 2011, his sister, Yingluk Chinawat, took the reins of this political movement and became prime minister after her party won the election by the largest margin in Thai history. In 2014, she was deposed by another coup. Now, Dr. Taksin, as you know, is a person who garners many opinions, some informed, some less than informed, and they range anywhere from terrible dictator to benevolent saint of the people. If you want to determine where you land, considering Dr. Taksin, you can pick up Professor Blake's <laughs> Giants of Asia book. And, and this is called From Exile to Deliverance, Thailand's populist tycoon tells his story, Conversations with Taksin. And I think the nice feature of this book is first of all, it, it's first person, so everything is from Professor Clay's perspective. So he'll say things, and I'm not quoting here, this is my recollection. So what makes it really terrific, and also terrifying, is you tend to be in Professor Clay's mind, <laughs> and you're trying to end up in Dr. Taksim's mind. It's a little excessive on all that. I'm gonna quote you a paragraph from the book, and it goes as follows. You might wonder, he's talking about Dr. Taksin, you might wonder whether it's the politician in him that worries about the poor, who can count for a lot of votes when they come out to vote, or the humanitarian. 
or whether that distinction even matters if the net effect of Toxine's politics benefits the poor. Dr. Toxine, in your political career, you have stood in solidarity with the poorest and most compromised members of our society. In the Ignatian spirit, that is that of St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuits, in the Ignatian spirit of the Magis, you continually seek to do more. You imagine globally, you share our noble ideas that mutual respect, open dialogue, and understanding deepens our engagement with the world and creates opportunities for all to thrive. You know the vicissitudes of political life and of the business world, and you've remained engaged in the world's political scene, particularly in East Asia. Dr. Taksin, your insights and experience will help our students deepen their understanding of world affairs. That's our goal here, and we honor your presence. Today's event would not have been possible without our LMU event co-sponsors, whose commitments to LMU's global imagination has significantly enhanced our international outreach and engagement efforts. So thank you to each of our co-sponsors, co I almost said co-responders, they will not be responding. Our co-sponsors are Asia Media International, led by Professor Plate, and our new International Relations Program. I end where I began by asking the LMU community to join me in welcoming Prime Minister Dr. Taksin Chiawat back to LMU. Thank you very much, Professor Snyder, for your kind introduction. Um, I'm very honored to be invited by the President and Professor Tom Perez to be a lecture here. When I've been invited, uh, I've been offered it, uh, the topics. It quite surprised me why we're talking about poverty here in the U.S., which is a developed country. And I try to think, and I think maybe the concern of the U.S. citizen now, especially the middle class, is about what the hope of that future. If their income still not increase that much, or even stand still, but the cost of living is higher, and the, the, the economy has been slowed down since the crisis, 2007, 2008. Up until now, the economy is still not, not improved that much. So the uh, middle class starts to worry that they fell into the lower class. And what is the income gap? According to Oxfam report of 2016, they said 62 uh, richest people in the world. The, the wealth, their wealth grow from 2010 until 2016, more than half trillion dollars. It means that 62 person, richest person in the world have owned their wealth more than what the quarter of the world of them own, half of the world. Half of the world quarters own less than 62 person in the world, 62 richest in the world. So, the income inequality, income, uh, the, the gap between the rich and the poor starting to be bigger and bigger, especially in the US. So the concern is everywhere. Until now, every country during the election, especially here in the US, they are getting boring with politics as usual. They want politics with solution. When Donald Trump comes to the scene, everyone thinks that, oh, this is new. But at the end of the day, the, uh, the debate, the, uh, the campaign, make things change. And uh, I think we are, every country living in, every country consists of two different societies. The societies of those who are rich and better education, and those who are poor 
and less education. They are all the same, but just different on the character of the, 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 the economics uh, level, even in the US. So the, we are living in what we call market economy or capitalism. We try to understand why we have the uh, free competition by having some group of people are uh, unfortunate and have no, no ability to access into capital. I try to understand why the poor in the rural area have no chance to prosper. And the rich or the well-to-do family people, they understand that the poor is lazy and stupid. Actually, they are not lazy, they are not stupid. But being poor, they have no chance to, to go to better school, to go even to normal school. So they become uh, less education. And when they do that, they are lazy. They are not really lazy, but they have no job. When I, I've been in difficulty before, when the business is very weak, because we try to do business turnaround. I said, this is a formula that we can help the poor. In the business, you have accounting system. You know what, is your, what are your expenses? You know what are your income, source of income? When your expense is higher than your income, you lose money. The company getting worse and worse and back up at the end of the day. The poor is the same. Sometimes they, and, and most of them, they don't know how to do accounting. I taught them how to do accounting system. And then they, they risk, simple one, list all the expenses and list all the sources of income. And they will see themselves. Oh, my wife go to beauty salon often. <laughs> and you cut it, cut it. Oh, my husband buy a lot of liquors. <laughs> After they cut their expenses, still income not cover the expenses. They start to think, how can they improve their income? When they see, they understand they can do it. They say, oh, I'm growing rice twice a year. The land is still empty. Why not be growing vegetables? We can sell vegetable, so they have they can have more income until it's it's uh, the income is higher than the expenses they survive. But this is this is a very native uh, a native methods. But how can the government, the political group, how can we help? How can we help? I start to understand, try to understand the capitalism economy. Karl Marx once said, capitalism cap economy will not last long because it's contradict in terms. Marxism will be better. But now you see Marxism is gone. Capitalism is still here. Why? Because capitalism is evolving over time. Start from Adam Smith and then Keynesian. Adam Smith talking, believe in uh, invisible hand market economy. But when the fighting, when the crisis happened during fighting during as well, uh, the chief advisor at that time, Mr. Keynes, Dr. Keynes, uh, suggests that the government should invest. The government should put the money into the economic system. Then financial crisis happened again during the late and and other Thatcher in UK. At that time, uh, capitalism evolved. 
by changing from government having heavy hand in the economy into less government. The privatization start to be done in in UK and uh, in late and giving flow of private sector in the economy more and more. In the end of 2007, the end of 2008, another crisis. Now it's a period of hard fighting that where the capitalist economy will evolve. If you look at what I have done in 2001 to 2006 in Thailand and what China is doing now, you see that this is going to be the direction of the capitalism evolving in the fourth cycle. China grew up, uh, China environment is socialism run by a communist party. After Deng Xiaoping come to power, China inject more of capitalism economy into, into, the, into the country. And due to Chinese DNA is it knows. They are quickly adapt to capitalism economy very fast. China grew very fast. When I became Prime Minister in 2001, Thailand is under uh, market economy of capitalism. But the poor getting poorer especially during financial crisis, we see clearly. How can I help? That's why I'm trying to think about how to help the poor get out of poverty. Government have to participate in the economic uh, development in the country. I Try to understand capitalism that my own definition. Capitalism took mean without capital, you cannot prosper. How the poor can access to capital. So I I make the, I draw the copy of the uh, each group of people in the, in the country, citizens. The rich can access to banking system easily. The, the lower level, which is not very poor, still can access to some kind of uh, loan. Like in US now, I saw advertising, many quick loans. You can tax easily, but high interest rate. Or you even credit card. Some people don't have enough money to pay, they use credit card which is very high interest How can we allow them to access into, into capital? The money in the rural, the saving in the rural area, which deposit the bank, bank take all that capital to build growth in the urban area. When the urban grow, the labor, the talent, the workforce, and you got a lot of slum ghetto in the city because the capital is there and you left no capital for development in the rural. So the talent is not there anymore in the rural area. So I was by bringing access of capital from the urban back into a rural area. When the capital back to the rural, the worker back, the talent back. So this is can be difficult the, the wealth. Like in US, because your education system is good, you have everybody, you have self-contained every in every every state, every city. That's why talent is still everywhere. But the access into the, and the accessibility into capital, into education, 
and now, especially in U.S. In, 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 in innovation, how can you trickle out the innovation into the mass? You need mass employment and mass consumption in order to bring the possibility to the country. So, I help the poor by bringing the state to concentrate on the basic needs or what we call physiological needs. That is healthcare and housing. Healthcare and housing become is very crucial for the people to be able to uh, stand up and prosper. The poor sometimes they save money in order when they need to go to hospital. They will use that money that, that they hide somewhere. The government bring the budget and calculate that how much per head and be giving type like insurance to the poor to on behalf of the poor by government paying and they use the service at the government hospital. They pay only one dollar per visit. Even giving birth one dollar, heart surgery one dollar. So we're just trying to uh, re-manage the financing system of the, of, of the public sector, public health sector. And we provide the low-cost housing. In UK, they adopt this solution as well. They're using, uh, they, they force those who develop the new area, which is expensive area, to provide the low-cost housing for the poor. Everyone needs shelter. The big country like US, you have homeless, many homeless. You need to do the address this uh, problem of housing. So housing and healthcare is a major. And if you allow access to the capital, the poor can have the chance to to think of their own method of making money. One day. I, after I set up the, uh, the village fund or microfinancing, some people come and, and see me and say that, oh, I, I borrow 5,000 baht, that is about $150 from the village fund. And they sell coconut juice every day. They buy coconut and they sell, they can make about uh, $200 per month, enough for, to send the children to school. So I think accessibility is a key. Accessibility to, because we are in capitalism, economy, accessibility to uh, fund, to capital. If the poor, if the, your citizen cannot have access into capital, they cannot, they cannot prosper. They now can access to uh, education and knowledge easy because of modern technology. But access to capital is the key, for, especially in the US. I saw many, many people in the US, they're trying to look for investment, they look for some money they don't, they don't have. Some people, they don't know who, who is who. So they cannot have access into capital. I've been asked by uh, many countries about healthcare, which is di different in every country. It depends on, normally, as, a, as, as the business leader, I use the concept of uh, rematch, rematching resources. Healthcare 
is one case of the help, really matching resources. And the um, economic development, also something that we need to be matching resources. We have a lot of education, a uh, lot of university in Thailand and university everywhere. But how the private sector, how government and how university can work together to help the community where that university is located, to bring people to to learn more about the innovation, and government coming to help, providing them uh, some fund, so, or bring the uh, some fund help the people to let them have an opportunity to, to grow. Many, many uh, you know, people in the, in, the, in the rural area, they're smart, but they don't, but they don't have uh, opportunities. If, they provide, if you provide them with good opportunities, they can, they can, they can do well. May I invite Q&A, probably better than the <laughs> Thank you. I've never been giving speech for many years because I'm in SI, so <laughs> <laughs> not well organized, but I, I'm, I'm OK with Q&A. Please ask as much as you want so I can respond better. Hi. So I had a question for you about the coup. Um, my question was, were there signs leading up to the coup that you may have missed? Were you so involved in helping the country? Yeah, louder we can. Oh, sorry. Do you want me to talk like this? Yeah, that's good. So were there any signs leading up to the coup that you may have missed? And were you so involved in helping the country and the poor that you missed your own downfall um, coming for you? Um, now that you're in exile, is there anything you think you would have done differently to change the outcome? You should look back on the coup. Okay. Um, you know why you didn't see it coming? And now that you look back also, are there some things you would have done differently to, to reduce the chances of it happening or where you would your attack on uh, basic structure and our structure pilot sucks that it was in Thailand had altogether 18 coups in the past 60 some years. <laughs> we probably the most frequent coups country in the world. <laughs> and uh, at the time, I'm really naive. I know that the movement is there, but I have two confidence that they will, but I thought that, oh, this is 21st century. They may not, they will not stage the coup. How come the country will be worse? I thought that everyone thinking about the prosperity of the people and the, the prosperity of the country. But it's not. Actually, it's about the power struggle. Jealousy is a, another problem in Thailand. And uh, you ask if I can do it, do differently if I were to look back. I'm a stubborn <laughs> If I were to look back, I still think that what I have done is good for the country, good for the people. I will stick to it. I don't care. Many, some newspaper ask me, if you were to go back as a prime minister, you're afraid of the coup d'etat, if you were to do it again. I said that I was student in the US when I worked on my master's degree. I worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> when I was in uh, work on my PhD, I delivered newspaper in the morning. And now I have my own project. I have houses in, in many countries. 
one can. <laughs> if I were to come out again, it's much easier and better, uh, and, and, and uh, much easier for me. On my, uh, um, uh, this school that I, when I came out, I have no house, I have only one apartment in, in, uh, in London. I have to act buy a house in the different countries. I have to buy Manchester City Football Club. <laughs> just to keep myself act, uh, busy. And now I have I invest in many uh, biotech companies in London. So I'm, I'm okay staying outside if I were to be a uh, stage cool in that again. Well, speaking of uh, uh, someone who's inside, your sister, of course. Uh, Jay, you have a question. Do you want to stand up and yeah, project, please? Uh, Uh, first, I want to say thank you for visiting LMU. Uh, my question to you is, do you agree with Sister Yang Lux's decision to basically run the risk of martyrdom for Thailand by remaining in the country when she knows it's risky to do so? Thank you. Do you agree with your sister's stubborn decision to stay in Thailand when she knows it's risky uh, and when she knows it's safer to be outside of it? Uh, she is different than me. I've been assassinated at him four times. But for her, because she's a lady, they dare not to do something that is uh, uh, brutal or violence against her. But they try to implicate cases against her. Even Fat, when she alive, she became Prime Minister. The fact is already there. And the previous government, afraid of being uh, being uh, alleged of negligence, so he find the case against her that she must be responsible for the fact. It's very funny things that happen. But she's very strong. She's much stronger than I, I, I think. Because she, when my mother died, I took care of her when she was 18 years old. I, I, um, I don't believe that she's very strong. Yeah? And she will, she used to stay in Bangkok, and uh, she can free to travel everywhere in, in Thailand safely. With even some harassment, maybe, maybe but it's, it's okay. She, she's, she enjoys staying there in Bangkok, and she will not run away. Before turning the microphone back to the president, I just want to mention that uh, events like these uh, take a lot of work. Dr. Jackson has been in many conferences and he knows all the work that goes behind the scenes. I want to thank the president for elevating the presidential effort. I want to thank uh, Dan Sloan and his team, including Donna, Donna Gray, who handles all of the myriad details for making this run so smoothly. The second thing I want to say before turning the mic back is that there is a story that uh, uh, Dr. Duxin will probably not tell you, but I will tell you, and that is that for some international conference, Bill Clinton, then president, comes up to, to Duxin and says, in his own way, I can't do the Clinton. You know, Duxin, you know the reason you have the support of the people they know you care about? Yes. <laughs> President Bush 41 uh, to give up all our support to the Thai people after tsunami. And then at that time, I just finished the election and won second term with landslide. I won uh, 377 seats out of 500. And uh, that's, that's the conversation we have. On behalf of our students, on behalf of our faculty, our staff, our alumni, our parents, the entire LMU faculty, I thank Dr. Taksin. Um, clearly, he is a person of and for the people. 
I'm not taking sides, by the way. In the same way, one occasionally wears green on St. Patrick's Day. I made sure I had no red, no yellow, and no pink today associated with anything other than my complexion. <laughs> um, but one thing I, I know about Dr. Taksim from having read about him over the years, from having visited Thailand and getting to know about it, is he clearly, in addition to being a person of the people, he's really a rational thinker and one who is extraordinarily pragmatic. So as we consider ourselves being in the Jesuit tradition, contemplatives in action, I think we can learn a lot from Dr. Toxine, and that certainly has taken place today. So thank you for being with us here. ว่าจะมีคนที่ดีๆสักคนยอมอุทิศตนเพื่อคนส่วนใหญ่กว่าจะเจอคนที่เราเห็นว่าเป็นคนไทยต้องรอนานเท่าใดจึงได้มาแต